Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. Usually we wouldn't cover a GPU like this one here, this late into a release cycle for GPUs, but to be honest, this MSI Aero RTX 3060 Ti took us about 18 months to get our hands on, and judging by what you've been telling us in the comments, this card is actually still quite hard to get in many regions around the world. At the same time, GPU prices are falling to MSRP and below, and we've had lots of questions about whether you're leaving any performance on the table if you buy a tiny card like this. So what we're gonna do is find out if you are leaving any performance on the table and tell you what the whole story is with the MSI RTX 3060 Ti Aero. Let's jump in. For me personally, I really like these tiny GPUs because they jam so much performance into such a tiny package. And it gives you the opportunity to build some seriously cool and some seriously tiny PCs. We actually did that last week with this card here and we built it into a 3.9 liter system. I'll drop a link in the description down below if you wanna see that build. But that aside, there is so much data to unpack in this video and there's chapters in all of our videos like this. So if you wanna to jump to a certain section of the video, it's as easy as mousing over that progress bar or checking out the timestamps in the description. Also, that said, make sure you watch the whole video to get the context of what I'm trying to say in this video. And as far as overclocking and everything, these are the out of the box figures only with this card. We're not covering overclocking in this video because the, to be honest, the thermal headroom is pretty tight with a card this small, with a cooler this small. So let's get those benchmarks and comparisons out of the way first. These graphs are weighted based on the performance of the cards that we're not focusing on from our entire GPU database. We use our regular test bench for all this testing as well to give you guys accurate results based on the testing that we've done since probably the launch of 30 series. Now, we've always tested with both Windows and Linux because me personally, I use both Windows and Linux every day. And for these tests, you're seeing the same 12 GPUs in every test across Windows and Linux. Now, obviously we're gonna have to do some retesting later in the year when new CPUs and everything comes out and all that stuff, you know how it is, but yeah, you'll just have to wait till that. So we're sticking with our current platform for all of this testing. But let's kick it off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. You can use the magic pause button at any time during this video to take a look at these graphs for a bit longer. Let's jump in. The first thing you're probably noticing, even at 1080p with this benchmark, is that the Aero 3060 Ti is a bit slower than both the MSI Gaming X card and the Founders card. This is probably going to be the trend going forward for the rest of the video, so a bit of a spoiler alert here. In Linux at 1080p, we're seeing it perform faster than in Windows, but this is usually the deal with this benchmark in particular. We always see higher performance in Linux in 1080p. At 1440p in Windows, the gap between the other 3060 Ti's and the Aero in the field, like all of the 3060 Ti's we included, that's increased by around six frames per second difference on average. At 1440p in Linux, we're seeing the Aero 3060i opens up that gap to around 12 frames on average. I actually retested the Founders card again, just to clarify that there wasn't any discrepancies between this and our historical data, and we saw the same results being echoed here when we retested. In Windows at 4K, we're seeing a pretty solid 60 FPS, which to be honest, is pretty respectable given the size of this card. And if you just think back to a few years ago, you wouldn't have even dreamed hitting 4K60 with a mid-range card, let alone a small form factor variant. So it is quite impressive. However, in Linux at 4K, we're seeing a dip in performance of around three frames per second compared to the test results we saw in Windows. All right, let's move on to Unigen Superposition. For the Superposition test, we performed three tests in total. We used a 4K optimized preset, the 1080p extreme preset, and a custom 1440p preset with depth of field and motion blur turned off. Let's take a look. First up with the 1080p extreme benchmark, this one is highly GPU bound, and I actually kind of like to call this one the GPU melter. We're seeing the Aero 3060 Ti equal the performance of a much more expensive 6700 XT. In Linux with OpenGL, the version here doesn't perform as well as it does in Windows, but that's just how Linux is regardless of the kernel or the driver being used with this type of test. 
and we saw this result again with the Aero 3060 Ti. At 1440p in Windows with this test, it's less GPU bound and the 6700 XT absolutely stomps the Aero 3060 Ti, but so do all the other 3060 Ti's to be honest. Again, I retested with the 3060 Ti founders to validate the results and I updated the results here accordingly. In Linux with the Aero 3060 Ti, it gains quite a bit of ground in the middle of the field and is only one frame behind that founders card that we retested. At 4K in Windows, it's going toe to toe with the 6700 XT and is easily outpacing the regular 3060. But as usual, it's trailing behind the other 3060 Ti, so no surprises here with this benchmark. In Linux at 4K, we're seeing a solid 60 frames per second and it's trailing just behind the Gigabyte RTX 3060 Ti by about four frames. Next up is Basemark GPU. Basemark gives us a great indication of Vulkan performance in both Windows and Linux. And because Vulkan is more widely used now, this is a great metric to have. At 1080p, we're seeing the Aero 3060 Ti performing quite well against the rest of the field. In Linux, the same thing's happening at 1080p with it sitting bang smack in the middle of the field. And if you're wondering about the 6700 XT's performance here, this is just AMD GPUs with Basemark in general. I don't know why they perform like this, but they just do and there's nothing we can do to fix that. At 1440p in Windows, it shows the trend continues with the Aero 3060 Ti with it sitting just below the middle performance in this whole group of cards, if that makes sense, right? It's right, right there in the middle. In Linux though, the gap between the Aero 3060 Ti and the Founders card is a whole 10 frames per second. Keep in mind though, if you look at the FPS for the other GPUs here, the numbers are actually quite high in general. So the percentage difference between those numbers is a lot smaller because those numbers are larger. Does that make sense to you? Maths, right? At 4K in Windows, we're seeing it echo the same results that we saw with the other resolutions with the Aero 3060 Ti sitting at the bottom of all the other 3060 Ti's. And finally, at 4K Linux, we're seeing the 6700 XT fall off a cliff and the Aero 3060 Ti being around two frames faster. I'm going to mention this one more time. I did retest the Founders Edition 3060 Ti to validate all of these results as well. We ran our one hour stress test in Ida 64 and we couldn't get the Aero 3060 Ti above 72 degrees in our 18 degree climate controlled office. But be aware though, we're running on an open air test bench and the results in a closed system are always going to be far different from what we observed and what we recorded. Now we include this result because our open air test environment is consistent with everything that we've tested across the board. I also recorded the memory temperatures as I always have, but I thought that I'd share them here to give you guys a bit of an idea of how hot the memory gets. Out of this entire field, the Aero 3060 Ti gets the hottest. but. That's no surprise given how small the cooler is. It's the smallest cooler out of the whole field. So yeah, you shouldn't be very surprised at that at all. As far as power consumption, we observed it hitting a board power draw, maxing out at around 199 watts at full load over the period of one hour. And this is about what you'd expect from this card. But to demonstrate the power consumption compared to other 3060 Ti's we've tested, and these are all of the 3060 Ti's we've ever had, I decided to show you the difference between them so we could see if or how the power consumption would impact the overall performance. Be aware though, this is the only LHR card that we've got, and I'm talking about the Aero, all of our other 3060 Ti's are not LHR cards. Now, this is a bit of a mixed bag really, and the Founders card has some of the best performance from the batch, but it consumes the least amount of power, but that also has to do with the LHR stuff. Now, I would say the power consumption is not much of a factor, as it appears that the cooling and the binning for each card makes far more of a difference. So for instance, the MSI Gaming X Trio boosts to around 1830 megahertz as opposed to the Aero 3060 Ti, which is boosting to that reference amount, which is 1665. Now that would likely explain the power consumption differences here, but overall the performance delta between the two MSI cards is you know, big enough and measurable because of that alone. Whereas the Gigabyte card boosts to around 1740 megahertz and the Founders card has the same boost clock as the Aero card, but you gotta remember, Aero card is LHR and Nvidia bins their own Founders cards a lot better than any of the partner cards as well. So that would probably explain that. As far as noise though, we observed the Aero 3060 Ti to be audible with our stress testing. 
Now you gotta remember, again, this is an open air test system that we use for all of this testing. In a closed system, you may hear this card because of the size, but probably not. Now, acoustic observations make so much more sense than getting your dB meter and reading it because those numbers are not tangible and acoustics are only really tangible if the card's sitting in the computer right next to you, right? It makes so much more sense. The thing that makes this card so interesting though is the fact that this thing is so tiny and although from our testing, it does leave a slight bit of performance on the table. I would say that if you're really struggling for space and you're trying to build the smallest PC ever, that your options are quite limited and your only option may be the Aero 3060 Ti. While I could whinge and complain about the availability of this card in particular, like we have with the rest of 30 series since the launch of 30 series, I think that's getting a bit tired. I'm getting tired of doing it. We can only beat a dead horse so much. Not only has general availability been a lot better for not just 30 series, but the AMD cards as well, we've seen a dramatic drop in prices. What's more interesting is the fact that the MSI Aero 3060 Ti is so small. Look at it, it's so small. Love it or hate it, I love the fact that even after 18 months of waiting, that there is such a small card that packs such a huge punch and that I'm actually excited about a GPU basically because it's tiny. I haven't felt this excited about a 30 series GPU since launch and before we knew how terrible it was going to be to get a card. As far as pricing for the MSI Aero RTX 3060 Ti, it's going for around 499 US dollars or around about 749 Aussie dollars at the time of filming, but again, that pricing I'm not sure about because the, all the other prices have come down and that's historical pricing, so it could be cheaper. But obviously, like I said, this is all subject to availability, which is very low for this card. But you might get lucky, you know? You know. Let's be positive, guys. But let us know what you guys think about this tiny little MSI Aero RTX 3060 Ti. You guys have asked us so much about this card. It's probably like the most requested card that we've had. And it legitimately feels good to show you guys what type of performance you can expect. And it's, it's just so small. And if you're lucky enough to grab one of these beasts, congrats, because this thing is pretty sick. Like the performance is really good for the size. It is absolutely tiny. And if you guys like this video, you know what to do? Smash the like button, hit subscribe, ring that little bell to get notifications. If you like the music you heard here, I make all the music. It's available by clicking that join button, you know, all that YouTube jazz that we say at the end of videos. And if you like this video, I'm gonna say it again. Hit the like button. If you disliked it, you can click it, but it doesn't mean anything anymore. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek, and honestly, I have not been this excited for a GPU in such a long time and it is just so small and so cool that how could you not? Like it's, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna build some really small stuff with this thing, guys. We already have, but it, yeah. We're gonna do some cool stuff. Anyways, thanks for watching.